Today we're going to attempt to try and over-provision my internet service from AT&T using this SFP Plus to RJ45 module from WeTech. What of you guys suggest that I pick this up? Uh, it was someone from Bite My Bits' Discord. I can't remember who it is, and I tried looking for it to give you a shout out in this video, but uh, I kind of can't find it, and my uh, control find skills, not so good. So anyway, thank you whoever you were, and uh, I'm sure we'll find out later. But we're gonna try and do that with this module, so let's go get it plugged in and see if we can try and get any speeds above one gigabit per second, because that is my current internet plan. And I guess, yes, I have stepped down from five gigabit per second to just one gigabit internet. I know, I'm a pleb, but it wasn't really worth it anyway, so uh, that's the point. Let's, let's get this done. I had to reboot my UDM Pro in order to get this work, so I, I guess it's not hot pluggable. You can't just switch from WAN 1 to WAN 2 on the fly. Uh, not a big deal, but that's what it took to make this work was just rebooting the UDM Pro. And let's go over and do a quick speed test on fast.com and see if this over-provisioning over works. Download's about the same. All right, let's do a test the upload. <laughs> the upload is definitely higher than usual. I'm getting literally 1.2 gigabit per second. That is, that's insane. I might have to get two gig internet or five gig internet again and see how much higher we can go. <laughs> All right, I just wanna run this a couple more times and see if we can get a download speed any higher than 900. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Higher than 900. Higher than 900. 940. 970. Oh, not quite there. So we can do 1.1, 1 1.2, no problem on upload, but just really struggling to do one on fast.com. Let's, uh, let's try wifi man.com and see what we get. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Come on, come on. You're not even close to 900. Come on, Wi-Fi man, what the heck? Oh, there's one gig. There's one gig, it's working. Come on. Oh, well, I don't, upload's great, but I really, I really want my download to be better. Uh. What else can we test? How about, uh, who else is out there? I don't really trust uh, speedtest.net. Let's just, let's just Google speed test, see what we get. Uh, it's not much better. It's actually performing worse now. I'm guessing I'm just not close enough to a, uh, to that hub, wherever that is, or that server. Uploads, uploads doing really good though. Uploads doing real good. Okay, so after talking to a couple of you guys on Discord about this, I determined that maybe using Firefox wasn't the best tool for um, doing speed tests on. So we're gonna take a look at fast.com and see what we can accomplish. Now, I did try this off camera a couple of times yesterday and I was actually able to hit one gigabit, 1.2 gigabit per second using fast.com like I am right now um, on download and upload. And with Safari, it seems to be a lot more consistent getting that 1.1, 1.2 gigabit per second on uploads. Don't really know why that is, uh, but it's cool to see. So in theory, that means any, uh, other software like steam or maybe any other one of those game launchers, I should be able to download at 1.1 or 1.2 gigabit per second, assuming the hardware on my end or on your end is actually, um, capable of like handling that much data. So basically you need NVMe or like a nice SSD uh, RAID array set up to, to hit really high speeds like this. And I have all that, so I should in theory be able to get, you know, four, five, 600, even gigabit downloads, um, which we've done in the past, by the way. So I know I can do it. But anyway, so I just wanna show you guys that real quick and before we move on to the next part. Let's take a quick look at what I actually did to make this work. So here on the back of the AT&T gateway, 
the VGW320, you can see that there are four Ethernet ports, and the very first one, or the one at the bottom here, is a five gigabit Ethernet port. And I simply connected this port to the SFP Plus port on my UDM Pro uh, using that WeTech module, and bippity bop de boo, everything just works. So just by having that transceiver is how we're getting or able to over provision my internet service and how we're able to reach those speeds of one point some odd gigabit per second. So uh, that's basically how it works. Well, it's pretty interesting that with just a $50 uh, SFP plus module, we're able to essentially get 200 megabits per second more every month now for free. It's obviously not free because you have to take into account the cost of the UDM Pro and all the other networking equipment plus the module itself. But when you think about the module on its own being about $50 and then the cost of, let's say, if you have the 300 megabit per second plan, that is $55 plus tax and, taxes and stuff. If you're able to slap in this SFP plus module and suddenly get 200 extra megabits per second for free, it's kind of a steal and a deal. And now that and I'm on the gigabit plan, so I'm getting 1.2 gigabit per second. And that's that's pretty awesome. Like I'm never going to use it, though, because it's not like I back up all of my servers to Backblaze or some other third party site that will host all of my data. I do back up my data to a friend's house in Orlando, Florida, but uh, I have some VPN issues that really prevent me from hitting like those high gigabit speeds. And also there's lots of latency in between. That's that's point. But aside from that, this was a cool experiment. I don't know if it would be worth it at home. Maybe it is, I don't know. I think that depends on you and the individual, but for me, it was just you know a fun experiment and it doesn't affect my upload speeds to YouTube at all. I did a test last night actually, and um, I was still seeing about a pretty wide range, about 31 to 52 megabits, no, megabytes per second on upload. And uh, that's basically what I've seen depending on what time of day I'm uploading to YouTube anyway. So there wasn't really any net benefit in doing this. It was just something that I wanted to show you guys that is possible to do if you have all the right equipment already and a bunch of other technicalities. But that's besides the point. I just want to thank you all for watching. Thank you, Cats, for letting me know uh, which SFP Plus receiver to buy. And of course, as always, thank you all for watching. And I will see you all next time. Cheers.